Psalms chapter 46 to the chief musician from the sons for the sons of Korah a song upon Alamo so here's another one it goes to the chief musician for those of the Levite sons of, of Korah <coughs> God is our refuge and strength and this is uh, written on Martin Luther's tomb in times of trouble there were cities of refuge for that person that killed somebody unawares he was run to refuge is you know you go for help not a bank not a credit card strength is in God a very present help in trouble well the the tense is present it's not past it's not future it's now in trouble God is our help he's the refuge and he's the strength therefore will not we fear there should be no fear when God's the refuge the strength and help in trouble when we fear it's when we step out of God and step into self or world we forget or we don't rely on God as to help we're to fear God not not the consequences and we all do it though the earth be removed can you imagine if people are going to be at the, at the great white throne judgment when there is no more earth well we that are saved are not going to be fear but well, imagine that person that that, got, that <clears throat> is standing back in line and knows and realizes and seen many people already cast into the lake of fire. I bet she's going to be afraid. Why? Because God was not his refuge. God wasn't his strength. God wasn't his help. And God wasn't his fear. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, that's going to be almost the event at the end of the tribulation before the millennium the earth is going to change completely <clears throat> and at the end of the millennium I mean at the end of the tribulation period the Bible says they're gonna go into the rocks and caves they're gonna cast their idols away they're going to fear and try to hide from Jesus why because there was no refuge in God they didn't trust in God in the strength God wasn't their help. They went to the Antichrist. They received the mark. And they didn't fear God. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. I know a time when the disciples were in a boat and the waters were roaring and troubled. And guess what? They didn't put their refuge in Jesus. They didn't put their strength in Jesus. They didn't fear Jesus, and they didn't seek the help of Jesus. Pre the present help. What, what did the disciples do the Bible records? They tried to get the water out of the boat first. And when the water was overcounting the boat, then they said, hey, Jesus. And they didn't call upon Jesus to do something like calm the storm. They called upon Jesus. Hey, Jesus, want to grab a bucket? We're going to sink. So, this psalm is a time of trouble. <laughs> Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. That's Selah, you look around the verses, there's going to be a second Advent passage. You've already seen it. They say that Mount Ararat, where the Ark of, the, of, Mos of Noah is, they say it shakes. A volcano mountain will shake. <clears throat> Swelling. A mountain that gets bigger and bigger. Volcanic mountain. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Jerusalem. And the Bible records that from God's throne there will be a river. The holy place of the tabernacles 
of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Jesus Christ will be in the city of Jerusalem sitting on David's throne as David the Prince <coughs> for a thousand years. And in New Jerusalem, God and Jesus Christ are going to be in the midst of the city. She shall not be moved. That's New Jerusalem. The Jerusalem on this earth, even in the millennium, is going to go bye-bye. Peter says. It's all going to melt. So now we've jumped off into eternity, New Jerusalem. And that river, in verse 4, is that heavenly river you read about in Revelation 21 and 22, where on either side of the river there's the trees of life. And God is in the midst. She shall not be moved. God shall help her that right early. Well, the earthly Jerusalem needs a lot of help. It's always armies being compassed about it. It's always been people in there who were not of God. And even the people of God have caused trouble. <clears throat> the heathen rage, I think we saw that in Psalms 1. The nations rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Why are they raging? Because they don't have they don't have America no more. There's no more Russia. There's no more South America. There's no more South Africa. There's no more Roman Catholic Dominion. It's gone. It's all gods. The earth melted. Peter says uh, fervent heat. After that fervent heat, you get new Jerusalem. The new earth, the new heavens. And those that are cast in the lake of fire never see that. You know, there, there's a story in the Bible with Jesus that that happened. I forget which daughter it was, but there was a daughter that was dead. And Jesus came in the house and all of them were crying and, and boo-hooing. And Jesus said, why do you make a do? So I think he said, they, she's not dead, she liveth. And what do they do? They start laughing at him. The mother and the father believed. He said, all right, mom and dad, Peter, James, and John, come on in. The damsel arose. Those who laughed and scorned Jesus at that moment never saw that happen. And the last thing that Jesus leaves with, with that story, give her food. Well, in the millennium, I mean, not, in the, the new heavens and the new earth, those that laugh and scorn Jesus will never see that resurrection of the city, the new heavens and the new earth. And then in the new Jerusalem, you get the leaves for food. Some believe we're going to eat in, in New Jerusalem, but that don't matter to me. Just to be with the Lord Jesus Christ without pain, without sorrow, and without sin is good enough. Just to be with Jesus. I don't need anything to eat. The Lord of hosts is with us, Jews. Why do you know that? The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Now that sailor there, the God of our refuge, when, they, when Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet, and scholars don't believe that Daniel was written, how you like that one? When you don't believe that Daniel was who he was, and Jesus said Daniel the prophet, then you take the words of Jesus and throw them in the garbage. Oh, that's right, that's what the modern Bibles do. <coughs> Excuse me. When Israel finally real, real, realizes, the arrangement realizes who that person is in, in Jerusalem, their refuge is going to be God in Revelation 12 as they run to the wilderness. And read how God protects them. He gives them wings. A place that is very protected that you can only line one or two men to walk into that city. You can't march an army in there. And something with the Bible, if you read the Bible, they're going to have to come out and get their bread. 
And when they get the bread, there's going to be a shadow of death. Come. How do you know that's not church age? God tells the church, go. How do you know it's not church age? Because in Revelation, when it speaks about the tree of life and all that, it says, come. Take the water freely. Eat of the tree. That's not for us. We're not come. We are go. When Israel, if Israel were to set themselves like God wanted to, all the nations of the world were to come to Jerusalem and find out about God. If they had done right, if you wanted to know about God, it would have been proclaimed throughout the whole entire earth, even probably North America, that over there, there's a city where God is, and you got to come. Find me one place from Genesis to Malachi, or in a Hebrew Bible from Genesis to Second Chronicles. Find me a place where God sent missionaries out. Find them. But yet, that's what he does in the church age. The Queen of Sheba, who went to her? Nobody. She came. What about the eunuch of, of Ethiopia? There was a man sent. Go. Go to the man that, go to this place. There's a man in a chariot there. He's reading the Bible. Go. Um can't think of the other one that came to, to Solomon. There's a big difference between the New and the Old Testament. One is come and the other one's go. That's two different words. Even most dogs know the difference between come and go, but Bible scholars and Christians do not. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What are the works of the Lord? Everything he done in Egypt. Everything he was to do in the land of Israel, if they had done right. You know what the law says? If Israel had done right, one thing said, there would be no lacking of birth of humans and animals. That place would be crawling with, with humans and animals. All the vegetation would be in perfect state if they had obeyed the law. You want to talk about uh, 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 green mother earth. Had Israel done right, Israel would be the greenest place on the earth. And I don't mean green environmental. I mean everything would have been. And if you were to go over there now on your holy tour, your holy trip to Jerusalem, you wouldn't find that over there. I've seen pictures of that place. I mean, uh, complete military dugs to be camouflaged in Jerusalem is where tan. You'll blend right in. If you were to re, re uh, if you were to, to wear a green outfit, you would stick out like a sore thumb. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolation, destruction. S. Desolations means destruction. He has made in the earth. Well, let me sit down and tell you, my friends, about Egypt and what the Lord did for us. If they were right in the nation, the Egyptians would come to Jerusalem and say, What did your God do to our nation so we can do right? Do you know that? No, there's never said in the in the law that if a Gentile came to you, you're to turn away and, and rebuke him and all that. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? There was one missionary I called to mind, Jonah. Jonah was sent. Jonah's a type of book of Acts, a Jew sent to the Gentiles. And what was the reaction of Jonah and Peter when they were told to go to the Gentiles both weren't too happy so there is one that went God said go into Nineveh he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth 
So every politician wants peace without God, and God says there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. It's not going to happen. Well, we got world peace thanks to the United Nuts in New, in New York. Uh, you got a husband and wife battling out down there that, that the police have to go to. You got kids killing kids in, in the school. You got people going to a movie today, and because the, the cell phone went off, they were shot. You're not going to have peace. Especially, you're not going to have peace in your children when you do not do what God told you how to raise them children. Listen, my friend, let me make a prediction for you right now. You think that America's bad today in 2014. You wait if the Lord tarries. When the children are adults, from the adults today that don't know how to act like adults. And the church is completely worldly. Because it's got worldliness in it now. And th those children will be brought up to bring more worldliness into the church. Which the church will be worldly if the Lord tarries. Then you wait to see what kind of mess you're going to have. There's no peace unless it's by God. The thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. He breaketh the plow. And cutteth the spear asunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Those are all weapons of war. Whether it's a tank, a helicopter, or a submarine. God will destroy it all. Read Revelation. One third of the ships are going to be destroyed. Be still. That means wait it out. Don't pull up signs and banners and wait it out. And know that I am God. We are in a nation today that is going away from that. In the millennium, they're going to know I am God, and that's Jesus Christ speaking, not me. It says over there, <coughs> excuse me, and the prophets, not complete quote, but thou shalt not go tell about the Lord, they shall know about the Lord. In the millennium, you're not going to need missionaries. You don't have to worry about the heathen. All will know about the Lord because he's there. I will be exalted among the heathen. In the millennium, there will be the heathen, the Gentiles. And it says again over there in the Minor Prophets, uh, if they come to worship, fine. If they don't, they're not going to get rain. So in the millennium, there will be drought if you don't serve the Lord Jesus Christ as a nation. I will be exalted in the earth. And Jerusalem is going to be the highest population point on the earth. In the millennium. Christ's throne will be all above the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Who? The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. You can't say America. God is not with America. God is only blessed in America by the few Christians that love his word, are doing what he's told them to do, and are praying. You better not get us prophets and us Bible believers upset. Because we just may not pray anymore. And woe to you, you better believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior now before the rapture happens. Because you wait till God takes us out of here. There will be no more prayers for the seven years on this tribulation and the great tribulation, time of Jacob's trouble, that God will hear. You are foolish. It's the time of God's wrath. You, you want hell on earth? God will give it to you. Seven years. And 
the Christians will be gone. Every single one of us. And if you're a Christian and you're here after the rapture, you were never a Christian. And there's a church out there that says they're the Christian. And the media and everybody calls them the Christian church. But let me tell you, my friend, when the Lord blows that trump and calls us home, that assembly will still be here on earth. It ain't no Christian. Church of God and Church of Christ will still be here because they ain't Christian. Church of Christ believes the salvation is by water, H2O. No, it's by the blood. No clothes there. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art